Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Visual Studio 2013 and C Sharp programming. Today we're going to start out by making a simple application and talking about the Visual Studio IDE interface that you can customize and set up in many different ways that should help you be much more efficient. So for now, let's go ahead and open up our Visual Studio. And you'll notice that in Visual Studio, they'll give you a start page. In the start page, there's a couple things that you can do and items that you can use. The first is, is that if you're starting a project, you can start from here, although normally I will start a new project from the file menu. You also have a list of recent projects that you've worked on. And Visual Studio, depending on how it uh, initially is uh, set up for default, usually comes up with some windows open. Now these windows can be changed around. For instance, my Solution Explorer is pinned out here, but I could have it simply as tabs on the side. I prefer to keep my Solution Explorer and my properties pinned so that they are open. Basically pin means that we're open. You use this little icon and that just allows you to keep it open. Also if I'm doing a project like a WPF or a Windows form project or something where there is a visual user interface I will also pin my toolbox so that as I'm working I can drag and drop buttons and other things from the toolbox area. For right now I'm going to keep it closed until we start our project. In this area, the start page, once we open a project, this particular area here is going to be our main work area. It's going to uh, provide us the area where we write code. It's going to provide the area where we work on layout. And basically, it will probably be the area that we use the most in Visual Studio while building applications. Also, let's take a look at a couple other things up here. You got the file menus and under tools, there are options. In the options area, it provides you the ability to pretty much customize any aspect of the Visual Studio experience. So for us, let's just do a quick little uh, example and we'll get into a lot more of these. You can change text colors, you can change layouts, you can change uh, uh, pretty much any area of, uh, of the interface that you want. But as an example, let's go into the environment and general and you'll see here that there is a color theme. The theme that I use is blue. I think it's good on my eyes. Uh, it allows me to uh, do the work that I want to do, but some people prefer other themes and a theme that's in here is dark. So let's just select the dark theme and press OK. You can see that Visual Studio creates now a whole new theme if you wanted to work in that. I don't prefer this particular theme, but the idea behind it is, is that while in the options area under your tools menu, you can come in here, get this open window that provides you all the selectable areas, text template, you can do uh, the text editor and work on what type of file extensions or the languages or the basic you can look in the different areas in here uh, list members wrap words it, it's all up to you how you want to set up your environment so as far as the general setup of the environment it goes I would suggest that you take some time and you look in there and you find what's comfortable for you now for the initial start as you become more and more familiar with programming and you determine the type of uh, applications that you're going to make, you will realize that there are certain things that you use more often than others or certain things that you like to see while you're working that you want to keep in your particular theme or interface, if you will, to be able to be more efficient. I'm going to change back to my blue color theme because that's the one that I prefer. and 
now we're back to where we started in that I have my blue color theme I have my solution explorer and properties yours may be a little bit different depending on whether you're using 2013 or uh, default settings for if you're just first installing but for me like I say this is my initial setup so let's start a project we're gonna start a project which is a WPF project and it's gonna be hello world the reason we're gonna start with a WPF project is I think it gives you a little bit more than a console application uh, I mean console application you write three lines you've written your application that's fine uh, it makes you feel like you finished an application I guess but I really want you to understand some of the aspects that are more available and, and honestly I think you you're, you're going to first application is going to be more of either a Windows form or a WPF or something that is a visual uh, user interface for the person that you want to try to use your application so I'm going to uh, start with WPF and let's go to file and new project when the new project uh, window starts you again have some selectable items here on the left we're going to be working with visual C sharp and we're going to select our WPF application we are going to call this hello world but it's going to be a little bit different than I think your typical hello worlds now the solution name is going to be hello world which is usually done by uh, Visual Studio when you're typing it in it just changes the bottom the location you can browse and and set up any folder that you'd like to keep your projects in I've created a de development drive with uh, C sharp and then the VS 2013 because I do have a lot of the older uh, 2008 and, and 2010 type projects so I just separate them into the different categories for me that keeps things organized pretty well and of course inside that folder we want to automatically create a directory for the solution that's going to be the folder that holds all the hello world application items and that comes in handy later on because you can just scroll down through that one uh, folder and see all the applications that you've made and what their names are press OK and once we do that Visual Studio will start to create the beginning aspects of our project and what does that mean well it's going to provide us a few things up front without us having to worry about them at all so what are those items anyway that Visual Studio sets up initially well for us because we're doing a WPF application it's going to provide us a couple files or tabs up here in the interface one is going to be the main window XAML which is the file that will be used for basically creating your layout as you can see down here on the bottom it's created a heading it's got a grid in there and you can see that if you clicked your little icon on the grid it now highlights that grid if you click it on the window it highlights the window also over here we have our properties if we're outside of anything selected of course we have no properties but by simply clicking in one of the areas that we're working with or that we want to work with in the XAML interface down here for creating our layout we then get a properties window and we get all the properties of of the hello world main window what I like to do though is I like to have everything listed in alphabetical order I don't really like the category set up everybody is different but for me when I look at properties I like to scroll down and just look for the name I usually have a good idea what it is or if I don't have an idea what it is scrolling down through the names it, it you know hits me and says oh that's what I want so I prefer the in alphabetical order type set up in my properties window also here you can see in the solution Explorer it's created a lot of other things for instance the references it automatically connects to all the dotnet references that it believes you need in order to deal with a WPF application so we have the Microsoft C Sharp, Presentation Core, System, System Core. As you can see, there's several items that it chooses. 
They're just going to close back out that. And then the main window, XAML. Well, let's look at now the other aspect of this project, which is the code. We just talked about the XAML, but now the main window XAML.CS is the code. So it's somewhat used the philosophy of almost uh, web design in that it is separated now the aspect of creating a uh, layout and a visual interface type uh, uh, code or reference, almost like a CSS file in uh, uh, in uh, HTML, CSS type of operation, and code for controlling what everything does and what you put on there. The other thing we're going to look at is, as I said, when I have a uh, visual window interface type application, I usually take my toolbar uh, or my toolbox and pin it. And once I've done that, you can see I now have the list of all the things that I can drop into my window and I can create the layout and the look of all that type of uh, uh, thing in my, uh, in my application. The next thing is, is also the sizing of everything. I mean, you can change the sizing of the windows that you're using or looking at while working. But what I prefer is I just usually say fit all. And by fitting all, I can see the whole window, and usually that's good enough for me while I'm doing initial uh, layout and look type operations. I may zoom in on something if I have an area in a corner where I'm putting a bunch of buttons and I want to work with the format and the uh, alignment aspect. I may uh, change the scale so that I can get a better look at that, but generally speaking, I'm looking at the overall window. Also in the uh, in that back down here in the XAML uh, area, you can see that it's provided you the title of the page and the uh, sizing of the page. For us, we're going to change this title to WPF Hello World. Got to spell it right. Hello world. Now what that does is it is actually the title that you will see at the top of your window. Now it's kind of shaded here because uh, of the interface, but when you run this application, you will see WPF Hello World at the top of the window that comes up. We also are going to change the size of this window because when we want when it comes up, we don't want it to be just 350 by 525, although we can have it to be any size, but we want to change it to something else. So on the height aspect of it, we're going to change that to 360. And then on the width, we're going to change that to 640. And by doing that, simple little adjustment there. You can see how your window changed more into a 16.9 type look or HD look if you will. And again, I now just want to put everything to where I can see the whole thing. So I'll fit, say fit all. I may have used sizes that put that window way outside the uh, area that I can view. So by simply going in and selecting fit all, it would put it right back in here so that I could see everything. So that's pretty much the end of this tutorial. We're going to actually start building the layout and we're going to start writing code and we're going to work the way through that. And as we do that, we'll talk about more areas in the Visual, stu in the visual Studio uh, itself that will help you become more efficient with writing code and making applications. But when we're done with this application, you'll have your first one under your belt and you will be saying hello world to everybody in the world. <laughs> so thanks again. This is Jeff. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I look for you in the next one.